renowned American author called Mark Twain says something like this, that the two most important days in a person's life are the day they are born and the day they find out why. Now, whereas the first day might be very obvious for majority of people, for most women, figuring out their purpose and the reason why they are on earth is actually quite a struggle. And you know, because of uh, the issues that surround us in society, including being born straight into gender roles. Now, at the end of the day, many of us actually think that our role is simply to nurture, to mother, to parent, without really figuring out if there is actually really more. But is there really more? Now, welcome to Her Standards with me, Queen Tambori. Today, I am joined by a panel of amazing women. With, I'm going to start introducing them from me here. We have our in-house counseling psychologist. We hired you, right? Yes, you did. Yes, I had to sign. <laughs> <laughs> we are here to sign. I'm here with Jackie Njeri, and uh, we'll be able to get to know more about her. Of course, we are also joined by Pamela. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, and she'll also tell us exactly what she does for a living and what she does in Nairobi. And then I also have Catherine. Jerry. Catherine Jerry. We are very happy to have this conversation today. What does it take to s discover yourself as a woman? What does it take to arrive at that journey where you know exactly who you are and what you're supposed to do and who you are for? I'm very happy to be having this conversation on our standards because many people struggle with this. Now, without much ado, before we get to know our guests, remember, we are always available across all socials on KTN Home, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. I'm also available uh, at Queen Tambori on the same socials, but I have a very specific fan page called Queen Tambori where I, I get to interact with you and we're able to share ideas and we're able to respond to some of your most pressing questions. So allow me to introduce, allow me to allow my guests to tell us exactly who they are. So Jackie, because many of us have known you, you'll be the last one to introduce yourself. Let me start with... Catherine. Hi. Yes, Catherine. Uh, my name is Catherine Jerry. Yeah. Uh, I'm a mother of two. As yes, I see you at I major. I, I have a degree in tourism and hospitality management, but I'm mostly in in Nairobi. I work uh, in, in customer care or front office. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you happy to be on her standards? Yes, please. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we want to know we want to know your journey of self discovery, but we'll get to that in a short while. Yes. Allow me to introduce Pamela. Uh, good morning. Good everyone. morning. Mm -hmm. uh, my name's uh, Pamela. My name is Pamela Jeremiah. I am uh, I work with Britam as a financial advisor. I'm also a counselor and psychologist graduated from Amani Counseling Center. Mm -hmm. I am uh, a mother of three, uh, of course, adults, uh, and I love my job. Thank you so much. You can see that we are represented across generations. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Pamela here who belongs in a different generation. She's a mother of adults, I believe. Yes. And of course, Catherine here is also a mom of Six and below. No, Six, seven and below. Seven and below. Yes. <laughs> and of course, our in-house counseling psychologist, please tell us who you are and what you do, Jackie. Uh, my name is uh, Jackie Jerry, a psychologist by profession. I happen to be her teacher as well. Imagine. Yeah. Uh, I'm a mother of two. Thank you for highlighting Sinjo Tukosoko. <laughs> I have a page on Facebook called The Golden Apple, Jackie Blaze. Feel free to follow. And um, on YouTube as well as... Uh, Oh, on YouTube as well as uh, Jack and Jerry Golden Apple. And I'm happy to be here. I can't wait to choma with these ladies because, yeah, we had already started. So please lead the way so we can... We can follow. Yes. Okay, before we get right into the conversation, possibly you can tell our viewers, because I know there is a link. The mm. three of you sort of like met somewhere. Yes. Yeah, so that they understand how we are engaging. So mm -hmm. how do you know each other? I went to school with her. I went to primary school with her. And then wow. in high school, somehow she used to keep track. I, I was quite popular in high school for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> <by the way. laughs> and after high school, we reconnected. And ever since, we've just been touching base with each other. She's been there for me when I had my first baby. Like She's been a constant figure in my life. Yeah. Uh, Pam, I met her at Amani Counseling Center when I was a facilitator and a trainer. Mm -hmm. She was my student. 
And at some point, I also became her counselor. So mm. that is how we know each other. That's how you know each other. Yes. Yeah. And you welcome so much on her standards. Are you on socials? Yes, but mm. not no. on that big level, just the personal. Personal, personal, level. personal level. Yes. Okay. In case our, because we have a very interactive audience, in case they want to engage with you directly, where can they find you? Uh, <coughs> Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, at Njeri Njeri or at Njeri Kate. Okay. Yes. Uh, Pam, are you on socials? Uh, no. Oh. Yeah. So, but if if you want to talk to us, <laughs> if you want to talk to us, or you have any comment and feedback, you can address us at Kate and Home. You can talk to me directly. But trust you me, by the end of this session, we are going to ensure that Pam is on socials. Yes. We, we will. We will. We will. We will. Take Maliza. Yes. We have, we have to ensure that she's locked in. Yeah. yeah. So, ladies, uh, where do we start this conversation? <laughs> um, I, I like the intro you made yes. because uh, as girls mm. we are born into the society with expectations already placed on our heads yeah. uh, we are supposed to grow up in a certain way we are supposed to behave in a certain way we are supposed to be caregivers we are supposed to be nurturers we are supposed to be lovers we're supposed to help people to pursue their dreams mm. while putting ourselves behind the scenes mm. if you come out as being too forthright there's a problem if you come out as uh, speaking your mind you're too opinionated if you come out as uh, a career woman they'll ask you if you become so advanced, utapata bwana wapi, you know? Uh, if you choose not to have a child, it's a problem because they'll tell you, as a woman, you're supposed to give birth, you're supposed to nurture. Yeah. So there are so many things placed upon the woman, and I, I wonder why the same exp expectations are not placed on our boy children, because they're all children, boys and girls, they're all children. Yes, they, they are, are born on a blank, with a blank slate. We are the ones who put all these conditionings. Yeah. So the boys grow up in this, uh, in this manner, and the girls will grow up in this manner. But remembering that all of them are born without anything in their minds. Yeah. How do we get here? How, how did we get here? How did we get here? Yeah. And that's a good place to start. <clears throat> Actually, there are statistics that show that by the time a child is uh, 10 years old, mm -hmm. uh, these stereotypes are already ingrained in them. I'll give you for an example. When we do, for example, baby showers, mm -hmm. and uh, how do we know that we're expecting a child or we're expecting, I mean, we're expecting a girl or we're expecting a boy? No, no, apart from that, yeah. apart from that, when it's you go guess. for baby showers, what, how else do we, how else, you know, say you are invited to an event, mm -hmm. which is a baby shower, and you walk in, how would you know that we expect? The deco will the tell me the what kind of deco. If it's a boy, yeah. it's blue, it's blue. It's blue. Yes. most likely. And, and if it's a girl, it's, pink. it's, it's pink. most likely pink, pink or purple. <laughs> yes. So these are the kind of things that we are dealing with as a society, that yeah. by the time we are, we, are, we are giving that to our children, mm -hmm. We are already putting them in specific boxes. And as Jackie has explained, I wanted to ask Pamela, is that how it used to be during your age? Because during your time, because it appears that the more things change, the more they remain the same. Yeah. During your days, was it also so obvious? These things called gender roles that women are supposed to do this and men are supposed to do that. It, was it the same during your time? You know what? During our time, it was so much that really there was that stereotype thing mm. that men have their roles and women have their roles mm. and you are not supposed to cross over to do the other role of the other person mm. and even it went as far as food mm. there are some foods that women were not supposed to eat seriously and, oh, yeah. yes and there are some parts of food mm. that men also are not supposed to eat they belong to women so there was that stereotype thing of class classifying people in along the gender line mm. that for example maybe if it, if it's a, a chicken women are not supposed to eat the best parts i look at it as if men were just being mean because you are denied the best parts and you, you are the one no, no, who has prepared, you're the one prepared the <laughs> meal <laughs> you are the one who has prepared the food and you are given the worst parts of the, the food yeah. so that it, it does not belong to you and it is just like that. There's no explanation about it. You would wa want to know why are men supposed to be eating the best parts of chicken while the worst part of the chicken are supposed to be eaten by women. And they're also even denied they're not supposed to eat some foods because they are women. What about that? You wonder and nobody gives you the answer. Mm. So it was so much. In fact, right now, it's 
a bit better because there is that uh, alertness, awareness mm. that people know that it is not supposed to be that way and they go cross and do whatever they can in their, in their, in their capacity. Mm -hmm. Yes. But um, on the same, I don't yeah. think we, have, we may have outgrown some things, yeah. but like you said, we, 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 we are changing, but we are really not changing. Because mm -hmm. when she says uh, some, some parts of, uh, of a chicken are supposed to be for men, I have heard it from people in my family say, uh, when, when you serve food and, and they're like, uh, you know, like you expected, uh, I'm, I'm going to use the, the drumstick. Yeah. Yeah. You know when you're serving food in, in your father's house, you cannot eat the drumstick and he's there. It's given. Utakula ile nini iko nambavu mingi na mabawa. And those things are not even tasty, you know. But yes, we have evolved. But even in evolution, we still remain the same. We have progressed a bit because we can speak about it outrightly. But behind the scenes, it's still, some aspects are still the same. We really have not changed that much. Mm -hmm. It may not be as bad as it was uh, in our mother's times, in pa uh, Pamela's time, but we are still doing it. The entitlement uh, for men is the same as it was in, 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 the, in that age. Mm -hmm. In, and when you, when you talk about self-awareness, it's me getting to a place where I'm like, I know myself enough to know that this is, this is not right. But then again, am I willing to go down the rabbit hole to, to delve in a conversation that is not giving me something that I meaningful in the end? Because it's just food. Mm. It's just food. In the end, it's just food. In the end, it's just this. And even when you say that, I may be that self-aware, but at the back of your mind, you're still like, yeah, I am self-aware, but that thing still sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. where, did you, where did you grow up, Catherine? I grew up in a small town called Nanyuki. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, then I went to school with Jackie, but for other reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to boarding school uh, in class four. Yes, mm -hmm. in a uh, school in Neri called mm -hmm. to girls. Oh my God, that school. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did, uh. did you experience uh, the kind, this kind of stereotypes when you were growing up in, in Neri? Um, Was it so obvious? Well, <coughs> let me say, I like to, to give my mom the props yeah. because my mom did not raise us like you're, you're, you're a boy, you're a girl. Mm. Because at, well, according to my mom, when you get to a certain age, whether you're a boy or a girl, you have to be self-sufficient. That is her rule. You have to be self-sufficient. And my mom used to do one thing. Uh, when you get to uh, about eight, the first thing she, taught, she used to teach you is to cook rice. Because in her head, she's like, I am, I am a working mother. I can go out and be late. But if you know how to boil rice, you will not sleep hungry. So I, I give props to my mom for being a forward mother because she raised us different. But still, when you look uh, uh, in the bigger picture around you, you will still see there are aspects of her teaching us to be different, but there are still things that my brothers did that I couldn't do. Because up to the time I was uh, in high school, I had a curfew. My younger brothers, who are like 10, 8 years younger than me, didn't have a curfew. Like, I was supposed to be in the house by 5. My brothers could come in at 7 and not have to answer questions. But if I came into the house at 5 or 1, I had to explain where, where I was for one minute. Like, it still doesn't sit right with me today. Why uh, me and my sister had that strict, those strict rules, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, that is one thing that you know it was only on the girls, not on the boys. Because if you're telling me uh, when I'm 14 and my 10-year-old uh, brother could come into the house later than me and not have to answer questions uh, like I would, um, growing up I didn't have very, I had male friends, but not out, outright, like I wouldn't put it on my parents' face because, eh, why are you working with boys? 
what is that that you're discussing with boys every now and then so yeah. you see it is still it was it was not as pronounced it is subtle but it is there it still exists it yeah. still exists I, I don't know why i'm convinced you your parents <laughs> were giving you the curfew because they they cared about your safety and well-being. Oh, uh, I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> Let's I, go with I, that. I stand, I, stand, I stand to be guided because I wasn't there. I'm just trying to reason as a parent today. Anywho, mm. before we get down to your journeys, just your, your individual self-discovery self journeys, mm -hmm. possibly the expert in the room, we have two experts today. I think we are very lucky. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell us when we talk about self-awareness, you know, it is such a... I uh, would I call it ambiguous. It's it's a big word, mm -hmm. self awareness. Mm -hmm. What exactly are you talking about? Are you talking about does it mean knowing uh, my rights? Mm -hmm. Does it mean being kichwangumu? What exactly are we talking about? Because it <laughs> means self awareness means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Jackie, you can go first and then and then Pam can come in. Yeah. Uh you see now we mm. have a lot of information out there. Mm. Uh sometimes we see when you know well, too much of something is poisonous. Actually, you don't say, we don't sometimes say that it's something that is there. <laughs> yeah. Too much of something is poisonous. Yeah. Uh, being self-aware doesn't mean you're kichwangumu. It doesn't mean that you know it all. It just means understanding yourself, who you are as a person, what makes you tick, uh, how to regulate your emotions, how to identify yourself in the middle of other people, how to, how to introduce yourself in front of people without identifying yourself with the roles and the titles that you go. Because most people in, will introduce themselves as, I am a mother, yeah. yes, I am true. a wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But who are you without all these titles? Who are you if we take away your Nothing. status? Nothing. No most one. of us, uh, <laughs> most of, so being self-aware means yeah. if we take away the status that you have accomplished, mm -hmm. the role that you play, mm -hmm. uh, your life partner, then as a person, can you identify yourself as an entity without all these things? <laughs> okay. That is what it means to be self-aware. Understanding your emotions, understanding that all your emotions are valid mm -hmm. and you don't have to run away from such and such. The negative ones and the positive ones. Just knowing how to um, put together all of them and embrace them because our emotions just are. Zilia kwa namungu wako for a reason. Jackie has said something, Pam, that you know, being self-aware is removing every other thing that you possibly know about yourself. You know, remove away the mothering, remove away the fact that you're somebody's partner, remove away everything that surrounds you, and uh, try to identify yourself based on what is left. Is there anything left for the African woman after you've removed everything? Is there anything left, Pam? Yes. Tell me. When you are, when you, when you don't know about yourself, you don't know how you can work on what. You don't know. That's okay. Yes. <laughs> because you have to understand yourself. Mm. For you to work on what you do, you really need to help others about and help yourself. You know, most of the time, we we focus our minds on the uh, other people and leaving ourselves. Mm. Where are we? What makes me say that so and so is not a good person? What is not good about that person? Until I understand what bad is, or how I also would want, how people also take me to be, I'm not able to really go on with good life. I'll, I'll find some obstacles, because that is where anger comes from. What is that producing that anger? Am I, what makes me angry? And how do, I re how do I work on that anger? And you can only work on that anger when you understand it and where it is coming from. Yeah, that was cool. great. Huh? Yes. Um, I think you did, let me just ask her. Yeah. You did the self-awareness course. Yes, I did. Have you ever done the self-awareness course? Uh, no, I did uh, codependency. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a story for another day. <laughs> okay. yes, yes, yes. So but with self-awareness, mm. uh, you get to define yourself and strip yourself of all these roles. And mm. I remember when I went into that class, mm. I went to the Kifuwa there mm. because I'm a specialist. Oh, so what are you telling what me? What are you telling me? Yeah. And then I realized, oh my God, without all these things, mm. I feel so empty because I have shaped my identity around other people. And I remember most people I did the course with said the same thing. We have shaped our identity. We have introspected. We have taken in mm. what other people expect us to be. 
but what are my expectations of myself? What does Jerry want for herself? Who is Jerry without what her mother thinks, without what her life partner thinks, without what society thinks, without what her siblings think? And that was an eye opener for me. Because now I realized all these things, ni vanity too. Yes. There's an entity within me that I need to build. Mm -hmm. And that is what we need to let people know. Don't define yourself by what other people expect you to be. Be courageous enough to just, for lack of a better word, strip naked mm -hmm. and start from scratch mm -hmm. and understand, okay. So if my parents did not expect this, 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 and this of me, if my teachers had not said this, this, this about me, what kind of personality would I have? What kind of person would I have? What would I be? My emotions, am I in touch with my emotions? Or I want to be polite and people pleasant all the time because, I mean, that is what people want. Yeah. But sometimes I want to be angry and mm -hmm. I want to express it. If I'm not happy, why would I pretend to be happy? Mm -hmm. If I'm not pleased with something, why can I not embrace that and express it in a socially acceptable way? Mm -hmm. Catherine, you've listened to the two ladies yes. describe, you know, what self-awareness is. Yes. Is that your is that your understanding of it, and what what has been your experience? Uh, for me, uh, I would say mostly growing up, it's not self-awareness. Awareness is not something that we were keen on, okay. because uh, you 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 went to school, you came home. You had uh, set goals, and mm. you know, as we did the eight four four system, mm. so you know, um, I'm expected to do A, B, C, D. That is it. But as I've grown up and gotten into, I think for me, my the first time I thought I needed to really find out more about myself was when I I, I got into marriage and stayed in marriage for a few years. Because then I, I, um, I realized that at some point, I gave and gave and gave too much. And if she'll tell you, um, I had postpartum depression. I've had uh, depression, depression. I, I, she's, my, she's my friend, but she's also my therapist mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I am her pro bono client because I don't <laughs> pay her. <laughs> She's, she's my, my on call yeah, we always therapist. Have, we always have that you know, one pro bono client. And, uh, yes. People yes. wonder why we've been friends since primary school. But it's because even in primary school, we went through so much together. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. from day one, we went through so much together. So for me, I think the first, first time, like, I really, really realized I needed to figure out who I was besides being a mother, besides being a wife. Besides being my father's daughter, besides me being my uh, a big sister because I'm the firstborn, yeah. was in uh, about uh, two years or so ago, two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's when I really uh, tried to really, really figure out who I am. Who you are. And like she said, once you start stripping down the, the titles, you realize, ah, yeah. I, I have a lot to figure out because I actually don't know who I am. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. We would like to... T I know the conversation is just getting deep and deep, but unfortunately we, we have bills to pay. So we would like to take a short break. When we come back, we'll pick this conversation up from Catherine's self-discovery journey and we'll work with each and every one of our guests. And so that even you watching us from home, you're able to... Find out whether you have started your self-discovery journey or if you need it. Remember, this is her standards and my name is Quinta Mbori. Uh, we will be right back. Welcome back to Her Standards with me, Queen Tambori. Today we are all about self-discovering ourselves. I'm joined by an amazing panel and I'm trying to understand their self-discovery journey. And we are doing all this actually for you watching us at home. How has your journey been? Do you even know who you are without the titles of being a mom, being a wife, being someone's daughter, being a church elder, being a teacher? Do you even know who you are? Now, if you don't know, then sit tight because we are trying to unravel this one step at a time. My name is Quinta Mbori, and I am joined by our in-house counseling psychologist, Jackie Njeri, 
I also have here Pamela and of course also Catherine and Jerry. All these women are courageous enough to share their stories with us. What is your story? Hit us up at Katie and Home across all socials, but you can also talk to me at Quintambori on the same uh, social media accounts, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can also talk to our guests on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Where were we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes, Catherine. <laughs> Catherine. Uh -huh. Catherine was um, revealing to us her self-discovery journey when she realized that there was someone inside there who was calling for help and needed to be discovered. Yes. So, Catherine, take it away. So, yeah, like I was saying, uh, I didn't know that you put, as a woman, I put so much so much uh, weight yeah. and so much time in being a mother and a wife, mostly. Because the moment you leave your father's house, uh, you put that on hold. Not, not completely, but you put being a, on hold being a daughter and being a sibling. Mm -hmm. Then you focus. The moment you get children, your life becomes about the children. And I realized that at some point, I couldn't even let my, 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 my daughter go for sleepovers or to visit my parents if I wasn't there, or if she wasn't with someone that, like a nanny or anything, I couldn't. Because the moment she went there, I was always on call, hi, can I speak to so-and-so? And it got to a point, and I, I don't know whether I would say my mom took offense or something, and she was like, you do realize she's, in, she's at home, mm -hmm. and you can actually relax. But I didn't want to think about it that way. Because for me, I put my life on hold. I, I, when, I, when I gave birth in 2016, I, I stopped working for about three years. I didn't work to raise my child. And in an era where we are career women, that puts you back, pro, it, it, it stops your progress as a career person. True. Yeah, and I did that. And only, only until I got postpartum depression did I start thinking, um, well, something is amiss. But you see, with depression, you don't actually realize yeah. that something is amiss until you're there and until someone points it out. Do you think ABCD is happening to you? I didn't want to go on that journey, but at some point I figured I have to figure out who I am if I wasn't a mother, if I wasn't a wife. Because it's not a journey set for everybody. Yeah. And I usually say sometimes, as women, we don't actually get children because we want children. We get children because it is set. The society what else, expects what else you. am I expected to do if I am married? Sit at home, look pretty, and... Uh, no. <laughs> like, society has put it in, in such a way that the moment you're in a man's house, at, at some point, because um, I, 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 I started living with my husband in 2014, 2013, 2014. Yeah. And by 2015, people were asking me, how now I'm talking? Whoa. How? Actually, by end of 2014, people were asking me, ah, unapata I'm totally me. You see, it's such questions that make you think, ah, what is wrong with me? Mm. And it's such questions that also make women fall into depression and do other things. Because then we are putting so much of ourselves on, uh, we want to be seen by society as ABCD, as someone who is ABCD, as Mama Nani, as Bibi Anani. And uh, if you look at it from when you graduate from campus, and me, me I give examples with uh, people who come for graduation. They sing for you, they give you gifts. And the constant theme is, Sasa tumekula kiki ya graduation. <laughs> Next ni ya? Arusi. Arusi. You do a rusha, and they will tell you, eh, watoto wanakuja lini. It's always something. And it's, and the, the thing is, that question is not directed at men. It's directed at, at me as a woman. Mm. Eh, so, ume, umeolewa. Unapata mtoto lini. Mm. You get a child, two years down the line, and uh, with words, people put uh, ideas in and, uh, and self-doubt in your mind, yeah. with or without thinking they're doing it. They do it. And unless you're, you're in a self-awareness journey or you're very sure of yourself, 
you will start questioning yourself mm-hmm. because you wonder, okay, I gave birth two years ago. Why am I not getting pregnant again? And you know, you will, you will actually know why, but you will still question yourself because that is what society expects of you. Mm-hmm. They want a progression. You A, B, C, D, you have done A, you have done B. So where is C and D? Mm-hmm. Mm, they want a, prog- a progression in a specific path, which, a, which is aligned yes. to your role as mm. a woman. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Pam, in my mother tongue, they say, where I come from, when you get married, they say you've gone to cook. Eh? Mm. Yeah. And um, it's very funny because in this day and age, there are women who actually don't even know how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> but that is that is on a light note. Yeah. My question is, or actually, some women say you didn't marry me to cook for you. If we need someone to cook, we'll, we'll hire a chef or something. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I like the fact that some men are beginning to embrace this. That is not what I'm. That's not what I stand for. I'm mm-hmm. just I'm just giving an example. Mm-hmm. But apart from you've listened to Catherine giving her story, Pam. Yeah. You know the expectations that come. You know after each stage, there's, there's always another expectation after. After the next stage, there's always more. It's like society never gets enough. And then there seems to be two different um, yardsticks for the boy and for the girl. Is there more inside a woman other than what we, what she's expected to do as a society? Is there more, Pam? Yes, there is. Our as a woman, for example, now in a, a marriage setup. Yeah you'll find that the woman is required to fulfill a lot of things that actually them themselves, when they got married, it is something they did not expect. Mm-hmm. They expected to be loved the way they, they also loved the man. They expected to be handled the way they handled the men. They expected also a lot of good things from marriage. But when they reach there, it is... It's a lot that meets an eye because these people are expected to do even beyond. They're even expected to, to know what their men are thinking about. Yes, you are to assume that he needs, he's hungry. Without <laughs> you need to be a magician. That he's hungry. <laughs> and a fortune teller. <laughs> you know, he'll just come in the house and there you are. He'll not speak. You just walk away and go start cooking and bring him food. <laughs> he has not spoken. He did not tell you that he was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe both of you are working. You are also in the setup of working in a working situation. You are both, both of you have come to the house. But either way, one of you has to rest while the other one is in the kitchen looking for ABCD. <laughs> and besides that, there are also other issues. Yes, he has eaten. And then you start asking for other things that where is my ABC, where did I put the remote, where did I put what? Mm-hmm. You as the woman, you are supposed to be knowing everything in the house. Yeah? So self-awareness is something that if you want to live a happy life, you can live that happy life if you are self-aware of what is going on in you. Mm-hmm. There is that, uh, you may find some characters in you or even in your spouse. Let, uh, sorry to use the spouse as an example. Yeah. But you see, sometimes he expects too much from you. Sure. And now, how much, how much is much mm-hmm. that you can give? Because it is not just that alone. There are other issues you are going, you, have, you are the one who, who rises up early and you are the one who goes to bed late. Mm-hmm. But still, you have to accomplish all the duties mm-hmm. that are meant, they are meant b- to be for you. Maybe you may not be aware <laughs> that they are, they are supposed to be yours. <laughs> but to somebody's perspective, they are supposed to be your duties. So you have to accomplish, you have to, to live by that. Mm-hmm. But then if you expect that from him, mm-hmm. you don't get it. And the, the moment you, do, you are not aware of yourself, mm-hmm then your life may not be the best. The best life. life. Yeah. Thanks, Pam. Uh, Jackie, I have two questions for you. Yeah. One, where do we draw, where do we draw the line between uh, gender roles mm-hmm. and slavery? <laughs> That's one. Mm-hmm. And the second one mm-hmm. is, what is, is, what is the difference between someone who is self-aware and someone who is not? 
because I think if you can give some practical examples, then we are able to understand. So you can start with with the first one as we respond to Pamela's comments. Where, where? Chome, Chome. Choma. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. Yeah, we are burning photo today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, mm. This is what we need to understand. These roles are something that are ingrained in us from when we are very young. Yeah. I'll give this example. Just look at how a mother who has a son and a daughter will behave. Let's say the son has forgotten to make his bed. Yeah. He's forgotten to brush his teeth. And then after breakfast, he's left everything on the table. How will the mother behave? Ah. Come here, let me tell you something. Mm. Today you forgot. Mm. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. you're going to have to do it. Mm. But if you forget, I'll still remind you. So we are very polite. We are very, well, yeah, this is my abuju buju, this is my baby boy. Oh, lo and behold, if it's a girl. Wow, nakatakuto is of you to nanya takuto is of you to wako. You see, and nanya takuo. Nanya, nanya takuo. <laughs> <laughs> so from a very early age, yeah. Ukijana, he grows up knowing there will always be someone to take care of me. Whatever, yeah. whatever I leave behind. The girl, on the other hand, because she wants to be accepted, because she wants to be acknowledged, she knows the only way she'll get this acceptance and validation and affirmation is when she ties this up. It's not a wonder. Just there's a social experiment that was done in the UK. Uh, they put a, a couple of children, like six children, between 11 and 14, uh, both girls and boys, and in within the first 20 minutes, the girls were already looking. Oh yeah. For something they can cook, because yes. you know they yeah. are hungry and they need to feed. Yeah. The boys were just there chilling. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> there will that's always be they... someone to take care of me. There will yeah. always be someone to mummy me. Mm. What yes. about the girl? I have to take care of myself and have to take care of someone else. Like that is how the world is. Now, the difference between self-awareness. Ah, no, you self-awareness and someone who's not self-aware. Yeah, someone who's self-aware and one who is not some practical examples. We have, we have, we, I think we are talking about, in this context, mm -hmm. we've made a lot of reference in marriage. So it's okay, you, mm. can, you can keep going. Yeah. Uh, you know when you're self-aware, you know your needs. And you know you're the only one who can fulfill those needs. Uh, you will not expect someone to mind read or someone to know whatever, is it, whatever it is that you need so that you can feel comfortable, so that you can feel happy, so that you can feel content. And this is what happens to most people. Now in the marriage setup, for instance, because you're already there, uh, most people get into it without knowing their needs. Uh, society expectations, society norms, age, whatever, whatever reason. Uh, you got pregnant, uh, you need to cost share the bills. There's so many reasons people get themselves there. But you cannot have this innate human needs and expect someone else to fulfill them for you. You need to first know how to fulfill them for yourself and then expect someone else to know. And they will not know just, just by Reiki. You need to tell them, I need this and this. Mm. I propose this and this. I would like this and this. So this is where we go wrong because we have needs but we expect other people to fulfill. We are looking for an extension of ourselves in other people. That will never happen. You'll for, uh, forever live in misery. <laughs> and you'll wonder, why am I so unhappy? Why do I have so much bile in me? It's because you're there seated expecting someone else to come and rescue you. Yeah. You are your own savior. And expecting someone to read your mind. Mm. And I think mm. that is one thing that from, uh, especially us who got married very early, mm. you know, when you get married at an older age, I think you've already been through life, yeah. you've already done so much yeah. that you already, it's, it's not a do or die thing, you know. Like she said, people get married for all the wrong reasons. There's someone who got married because it's, it's my time. If I don't get married now, then when, you know. There's someone who got married because this is the love of my life. And um, like I was telling Jackie some time back, we all get married, yes. But none of us is actually self-aware or aware of why I, you're getting married. Some of us just find ourselves, I, I am married. I love, I love this guy, so we, we have to start this life. Mm -hmm. And um, I read somewhere the other day people saying that most of you are married not the love of your life, but to the situation of your life. <laughs> what? Yes, because you got into a situation mm. and we, we don't understand that love and marriage mm -hmm. is work. And people mm -hmm. don't want to, that is one thing that people, that is a conversation people don't want to, 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 to have. Everything takes work. Even being a daughter is work. Mm. Even being a sibling is work. Mm. But we're not ready for that conversation. What, what, what people think is, um, 
when, when uh, personally for me, I thought, I have always been a person who loves gr the grand things, like, the, you know, on the grand scheme of life, I want it big. Mm. I always thought I would get a grand. Go proposal. big or go home. <laughs> yes, the, the big white wedding. <laughs> and then, and then you, you come back and realize it is not what you actually expected. <laughs> it is not. And uh, like she said, sometimes we get married for what you want. There is what I want. Mm -hmm. And there is what I expect my partner to know that I want. Mm -hmm. That I'm not telling him. Yeah. And that for me was one thing that I realized when I was on my... I have realized. I'm still on that journey because it is a never Yeah, it is, it is a journey. So the one thing I never used to do is get get angry angry because uh it's my birthday and he he didn't say happy birthday yeah. in the morning yeah. uh it's sunday and he's out or he's with the brothers or the friends and i'm in the house or and that was even way before we had kids and when you start now going on the self-discovery journey mm -hmm. you realize this person is not a mind reader but in my head, I'm thinking, see, they do it in the movies. Why are mm. you not reading my mind? Mm. Yeah. Why are you not doing what other, other people do? <laughs> and another bad thing that we do is look at the other house. And you're thinking, hey, akina ni analepe wango maua kila mande na friday. Mimi maua ni ile ni abiz. And then you're like, hey, they are always going on dates. What are dates? Yeah. You know? And we forget that how I was raised yeah. is not how your partner was raised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are people who who have been raised to give words of affirmations, yeah. who, who know actions mean something. Mm -hmm. And then there is someone who does not tell you, but what he does shows you that mm -hmm. he loves you. Mm -hmm. And uh, like she said, you become bitter. Mm -hmm. And you're bitter for the wrong reasons because you're not even talking. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I know the one thing that I really was poor at is communication and it is a very big thing if you want to discover yourself because then I am able to say um by the way you did ABCD I did not feel uh, I did I felt ABCD mm -hmm. and this is why mm -hmm. but before then mm -hmm. I couldn't I will just get angry about things and you know <laughs> When, when you're angry, someone said, when you're angry, you cook a lot of good food because <laughs> there is so much energy in you, so you're doing the most, you yeah, know? Yeah. So you will take out your anger on your food. You will take out the anger on your house. And I am that kind of person who, when I am angry, I clean. I clean. <laughs> I will scrub your pots and they will shine yeah. because I have a lot of energy. energy. Mm. And that was me before I, I realized you can actually talk to somebody mm -hmm. and tell them A, B, C, D is not, it's not, not for me. For me. Mm -hmm. And for you to get to a place where you're saying A, B, C, D is not for me, mm -hmm. you have to be totally, not totally self-aware, but to a degree you have to be self-aware and trust yourself enough to know that if I say this, it's, it's not go necessarily going to have consequences because yeah. consequences is another thing that as an African woman, we avoid mm. consequences. consequences. Mm. Yeah, We don't like yes. to suffer. Yes. Thanks, Catherine. Two things that you've, 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 you've said, um, self-awareness journey, self-awareness is a journey and self-awareness helps you manage expectations and self-awareness also makes you set standards, if I could summarize what, yes. what you've said. Pam, as you've this is like your final comment because our time is up. When is the right time to have this discussion or to start this journey of self-discovery? When is the right time? Is it at birth? Is it at teenagehood? Is it before I get married? Is it before I get a, a new job? Is it before I get into a relationship? When is the perfect time to have, to start thinking about your self-discovery journey? In fact, uh, as, as young as you are, if you started knowing yourself, it is the best because most of these things will not find you. Mm -hmm. You'll have discovered yourself. This is how I am supposed to behave. Mm -hmm. Look at the family tree. Look at the, some of the characters that you are trying to take from your family members. What can you live and what can you live with? So as early as you get that information about self-awareness, if anybody mentions, 
or you find it on media and get interested, try to discover yourself mm -hmm. as early as possible so that most of these things do not take you as, as a surprise. Mm -hmm. You are already knowing that so my grandmother used to behave like this and they associate you with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it good or is it bad? Pick up the good one mm -hmm. and drop the bad one, drop, drop it. it. You will look at your spouse, mm -hmm. especially now in marriage, mm. and find that there are some characters that they associate him with the, the aunties and what. If you are self-aware about where that character is coming from, mm -hmm. it is not going to hurt you, mm -hmm. and you are going to help him to rediscover himself. Mm -hmm. He may decide that, no, I don't want to be associated by so, with so-and-so mm -hmm. because it was a bad character. Mm -hmm. Let me walk away from it. So as early... As early as, as early as you've watched this show. If you've not yes. started your journey of self-discovery, this is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. And who better to take you through self-discovery journey than counseling psychologists? And we are lucky to have one in the, in the room today. Mm -hmm. Jackie, please look at your camera and address all and sundry about this self-discovery journey. Self-awareness, of course, it entails monitoring your thoughts so that you can know what kind of thoughts you have, the ones that you can uh, give power to and the ones that you can choose to ignore. Managing your emotions, knowing your expectations, knowing who you are, uh, you know, when you strip away all these roles that we talked about, they're most importantly, just embracing yourself as you are, because you are whole. You're beautifully and wonderfully made, and you need to remind yourself this each and every morning. If you need to repeat this affirmation every morning, you're beautifully and wonderfully made. Please do. Because if you don't, because if you don't reaffirm yourself and validate yourself and make yourself feel good, then the world will smash you. It's a cruel world out here. So do it for yourself so that the world can radiate whatever energy you're giving to the world. Now, on the 4th of February at the Social House Nairobi, we have uh, a women lunch. Please come and dine with us. Uh, we'll be talking about self-love, self-awareness, self-care, all these things that entails the woman, the woman. We want you to connect with yourself. We want you to reconnect to the inner child that is. We want you to understand who you really are as you embrace this next chapter of your life, which I promise you will be a beautiful one. So we are going to uh, share the poster later on, but I look forward to seeing all of you there. Thank you so much. Well, uh, sadly, we've come to the end of this show today. We were trying to rediscover ourselves, trying to get to know who we are, and helping me to do that was uh, these amazing ladies from Catherine to Pam to Jackie. And trust me, we've had an amazing, amazing time. But you can also be part and parcel of this by engaging us on our socials across all platforms on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn. You can hit me up on um, uh, this, uh, the special fan page on Facebook called Quintambori. Similarly, you can keep up with all our past episodes of this program that connects you to women that you need to know. On uh, YouTube, you can go to the KTN Home YouTube and you will find all of them lined up from the top to bottom. Till next time, we hope you'll have a good one. And please ensure that you start the self-discovery journey. Ta-da. Oh. Mm. <laughs>